All right, hey there. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use our touch sensor here. I can sense the world around it and sense being pressed in so that we can make it bump into the wall, back up, and turn around. It'll be fun. So let's get going and see how we can do this. So once again, I want to make a new program inside my project, tutorials.ev3. And I will call this one touch sensor. Cool. And we are going to be using the touch sensor. And what happens is I have this little sensor right here and it is plugged into the ports in the back. So this is port number two. Remember the letters are for the mortars. The numbers are for the sensors and it senses whether or not it has been pressed or released or pressed and released. And it just tells the little computer inside the EV3 that this happened. And what our job is, is to take this information and then tell once we receive that information, then we tell the EV3 how to act. So we receive some input and then we program it to do some output. And that's what we're gonna do here. So when people think of the sensors, a lot of times they'll just go to the sensor port and kind of drag things out and think that will just work. And we will be using the sensor tab later when we start to delve into more complex programming. But the easiest way to get started with it is just in flow control and with the weight block and the loop block. Now we haven't used the weight block yet. And what the weight block does is it just basically waits until a specified condition is met and then the next process happens. So if I were to do my move steering, right now it's on time and it's one second. So if I press play, it would wait one second and then it would go forward. Like one and then it goes forward. Now, just like in the loop, but um, in the loop block, we can change the different conditions that need to be met for that to proceed. So for this one, I want to do the touch sensor and we can do compare or we can do change. We are going to do compare. It will compare to what it was, uh, what we wanted to do versus the state that it is currently in. If I do compare and state, we are giving the three options that I had before. We can be released, which is just it was being held down and now it's being let go. It could be pressed where it was up and then you pressed it down. Or you could do bumped where you press it down and then you release a kind of combination of the two. Uh, for this one, I will do bumped, but really you could do any of them. Uh, this is a data wire, which is something that we will be getting into in the next few tutorials and it is a very useful feature. And this is the port number. It, if it's plugged in and turned on, it will sense the correct port. And I am plugged into port two. Just make sure you have that correct. And so when we press play, it will wait until it is bumped and then it will go forward. So let's try this out. I can press it down and then I release it and it goes. Now, if we were to change it, so it just bumped, and press play, it will just go like that. And finally, let's do it with release. And we just, we need to hold it from the beginning or else it won't work. And when I release it, it will go. So play around with that and get that working. Make sure your touch sensor is correct before we head on to the next part of it. I'm gonna put this back on bumped. So in addition to having the weight block being useful for our touch sensor, we can also use the loop, which is what we had before. So if I drag out the loop and then I drag out another move steering, this will keep on going until this condition is met. Remember from the last time. Last time it was simple. It's just a number. So we had to go four times and then it exited the loop. Right now, if I were to do this, it would keep on going forever. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to go into the touch sensor, the state, and we want to have it so it's either released, pressed, or bumped, and I will have it be pressed again. Now, 
before we download this, this is important. If I were to just download it right now, it would have this sort of like herky-jerky motion. It would go er, 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 until I press the touch sensor. And that's because it keeps on going one rotation regardless of what happens in here. So it'll go one rotation, one rotation, one rotation. What we want is just to have it be on. So it will keep on being on, it will keep on going forever until this button is pressed. So I'm gonna press play. It will wait until it is pressed. Then we could actually just get rid of this now. We don't need it anymore. It will wait until it is pressed and then it will go forever until it is pressed again. So I need to be on my game or the robot will barrel off my desk. Let's try this. Ooh. Actually, we do need that. That was so I don't it's too quick, so it doesn't sense like it waits until it's pressed, but then it also exits because it's pressed at the same time. So I'm going to have it go forward for a bit and then try this you can see that works like that and now it is kind of a simple next step in order to get to where we could just hit a wall back up and turn around so I got rid of those other two and now when I press play this will just go forward until it runs into something then just our move steering is a combination of these we want to back up. We want to turn around. And you might have to play with that to get that correct. And then let's just have this go forward again until it's... So if I go like this and I press Command-C, I can do Command-V, and that will just throw that, it'll paste it and it will go forward until it is bumped again. So let's try this out. Okay, so we're gonna try this out. I have my touch sensor, press the button, press the wall, backs up, turns around, and I hit it again, and it turns off. And you'll find that the touch sensor can be very useful for bumping around certain areas and figuring out where you are and starting things and find many different ways of using it. Join us for the next tutorial where we will learn all about the different sounds and the images and the buttons and lights that are on your EV3 and how we can use those. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.